Hey folks, welcome to Weekend Technical Analysis Update by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This Weekend Technical Analysis Update is for Monday, April 19th through Friday, April 23rd, 2010. What a week in the markets, folks. What a week for subscribers of the Research Center and the intraday stock chat for InTheMoneyStocks.com as profits were rained down upon all. We saw the FAZ rip higher. We saw small caps like the Hidden Gems move up and previous Hidden Gems soar as much as 500% in the last couple weeks as things continue to roll. Now, bottom line is, last week showed us a key thing and we're looking for confirmation this coming week. That's what it comes down to bottom line. The Dow again last week we saw it inch up basically day after day for the first four days of options X and then to throw that curveball in the markets we saw this uh, kind of charge of fraud be levied on Goldman Sachs which rocked the markets. We saw Goldman drop over 10% just drop like a rock intraday. We saw the spiders collapse as you can see before you right here. The market again gapping slightly lower on Friday then coming down bouncing up and then the Goldman charges were released and the market just tanked all the way back down. To be honest folks it's the biggest drop we've seen in months in this market which again by the way it was not a huge huge drop but from what we were used to seeing lately that is a huge move to the downside Dow was down 126 on Friday. NASDAQ was down 34.5. S&P was down about 19.5 or 1.6%. Now, the question everyone's curious about is, are the markets going to rebound? Are we going to see what we've been seeing every, every, every single day following a down day, which would be a significant update or a bounce day in the markets and no confirmation to the downside? Now, I'm not going to release exactly what confirmation is. That's for our premium subscribers of the Research Center to really understand so that they can be on the cutting edge of the next market move here. But bottom line is this folks. You have now seen a crack in the glass in the markets. And again, it looks to be a political move. I hate to bring politics into the markets, but we have to be honest. The markets are run by the political scene now. And again, Obama, after his health care push, he gave a little time off. Now he has attacked on the financial reform side, and this is going to be enough to win him the approval and get what he wants passed, passed for financial regulation. It was a calculated move. I give him a lot of credit for as a smart individual, whether I agree on certain things or not. That's not the issue here. We're talking about a calculated, smart move to get the general public into the financial reform. And again, if you go back a week or two, people probably wouldn't be up for it that necessarily because everything seems to be roaring back. The markets are back up 70, 80, 90% off their lows. Everything seems to be good. And Obama realized that. He has to hit it where it hurts, which again, to get people angry, to get people angry at these banks and Wall Street players, he has to release this type of news. And again, what politician is going to vote against this reform now after this type of news has come out? Bottom line, it's what has happened here, and we have to now trade the basis off of it and profit from it. So again, good job. Again, Friday, the big call on Thursday right into the close was to pick up FAZ. We locked and loaded that, and again, subscribers had that call on Thursday late in the day, and sure enough, they made tons of money as the market ripped down on the day on Friday, and FAZ charged all the way higher. Take a look at the chart of FAZ here unbelievable move guys look at this surge basically from ten dollars eleven bucks all the way or up to that eleven dollar to make that twelve dollar level truly an amazing move here on FAZ in Friday session all the way up to 1260 for basically a previous close of eleven bucks and again holding that from the day before was the smart move and again as I said in the Friday intraday video it wasn't that I necessarily knew that the levies of fraud were going to be put on Goldman Sachs it was more an issue of calculating the risk factors in on the financial plays and saying to yourself or saying to myself that there's very little risk of losing on the FAZ in this situation and sure enough look at the move up that we got. So a beautiful trade there for those of you in the research center, for those of you in the today stock chat. If you're not in either one of them, I suggest joining very, very quickly to get the next trades that should be coming out. All right, next up, let's go over some of the, of the key moves. The SPY guys, I love this fall for a couple reasons. Number one, what you can see right here, if we scan back, all right, if we scan right here, you can see there's a little bit of an MA pattern formation on Thursday on the charts. Right here, M, here's your A. So here's your M pattern on Thursday. Friday, we get the A pattern up and then the drop like a rock. And that's a beautiful MA pattern. A little sloppy on this side here, but it played out like a T, all right? Beautiful drop. And again, you can see what MA patterns happen here. And that's why the monthly chart is such a freaky chart if you look at it because of this general pattern that's developing. But in any case, that's your pattern. That's how it played out. And you can see your MA comes all the way down to major support right around that $19, $18.75, $118.75 level on the SPY. Interestingly enough, folks, we have a couple things we're looking for on Monday now. 
as we come into the trading day, we want to see what type of day Monday shapes up to be. Are we going to see the futures open down sharply again tonight on Sunday, or are we going to see the markets again start to rebound like we've seen so many times in the past? This next day, literally Monday, will be a huge day in regards to knowing where this market will head for the rest of the week and possibly for the rest of the month, even into May. Why? Because again, confirmation is what you're looking for. You have to look for confirmation. Now, interestingly enough, interesting to note here, you do have a little bit of an in spirit of bear flag development right here. Sharp move down, inside sideways kind of consolidation right here. That could be viewed as an in-spirit of bear flag, which could tell us Monday could be down. But again, it's a very, very tough one because it's all going to come down to volume. Volume is a key player now, guys. You have to understand volume because if you have light volume, then generally the markets will be able to stay steady and they'll be able to be propped up or you'll see a few individuals buying and that'll be enough to keep this market higher. If you see heavy volume, that means institutions are involved and we haven't seen a day of heavy volume where the institutions have been buying. Instead, they've been selling with reckless abandon and many restra uh, restraining type messes where we see things like this in Goldman Sachs, where all of a sudden Goldman Sachs gets this and then you get huge volume surges. And look at the volume here, folks. 366 million traded. We did earlier in the week 100 million. Just shows you how much intense volume increased across the board as we got this type of move in the markets to the downside. Now, again, the question comes in, what's going to happen on Monday? Then once we get Monday, we can figure out what the rest of the week is going to do and I'll position myself accordingly for that move. So, so be ready. You want to be in tune on Monday because that's going to be really the characteristics of which way this market's going. Now, a couple other things to go over here. Let's go to the 60-minute chart. 60-minute chart. This is the in spirit of bear flag I was talking about. Look at that. Beautiful drop off a cliff. And again, you can see one up, down, two up here, down, three up. Often say, they say three peaks to a valley. One peak, two peak, three peaks to a valley. There's your valley forming right there. And this is all technical jargon that we teach our subscribers. And again, Research Center guys, intraday stock chat people, whatever it may be. Again, we go over this hardcore in the nightly videos and all the other things that are featured in the Research Center as well. But one thing again, there's your in spirit of bear flag on the 60 minute. I love the fact that it's below the 50 moving average. 50 moving average, 20 above. So far, you do not have a ton of support. The only support you really have here is this line right here. All right, that one right there, and there's another key line that I'm going to show you right now, and we're going to shrink the chart down so you guys can see it. All right, if you go back all the way here and take this little pivot, look at this. Look at that. How amazing is this trend line? So you're taking it all the way back from kind of mid-March, connecting it to this low in late March, the lows in late March, and then again right here in early April, and the low of the day on Friday coincided with the pierce of this level. If you can get through this level, I think you're going to the 200 moving average at least on the next breakdown, and that's all dependent on this break here. You have to have this in spirit of bear flag breakdown, and you should, again, have a target on that of about the 200 moving average. That's at 117.50. 117.50 would be the spot to watch on that chart. Now, if we go to the daily chart, very important because now you have one down day, we look for confirmation. Again, that's going to be a very, very key thing in this market. In addition, what you're going to start to look for, you're going to look for support at the 20 moving average right here, which is at 118.25. And then if you get through that, your 117.50, as I just pointed out, is going to be your next level on the downside. On the upside at this point, the double top would be in play. And if we get back to the 121.50-ish level on the SPY, that would be your uh, resistance on the upside. Weekly chart, very key. Did we have a little bit of a tail formation? right underneath the 50 moving average, excuse me, the 200 moving average on the weekly. We'll find out as well next week when we analyze things in the intraday like stock chat as well as the nightly videos where, again, 40 minutes in length and time, hardcore analysis, gold, oil, the dollar, stock market, stocks, you name it, it's covered. All right, dollar is going to be very key again. We've seen the dollar have some crazy moves here, as I'll just quickly go over the dollar. The dollar, again, after peaking back here, has now started to come in pretty sharply. In fact, from this high pivot at one, uh, 24 four twelve high on the UUP, which is the dollar index, you have had a low just earlier last week of about 23.45. That's a powerful drop on the dollar in a couple weeks, and we need to watch. Are we creating an in-spirit of bear flag here, or are we going to rebound and take out a major level? And again, that's more stuff that we'll cover this week in the nightly videos in the Research Center. Now, a couple other things to go over as well. I want to cover uh, some key stocks, but number one, what I want to do, first of all, we'll just take a look at Goldman. Look at that daily Goldman chart. Is that insane? Obviously, one thing I would look for, folks, if Goldman touches this level right here, you probably get a good bounce. I don't know if it'll sell or bounce tomorrow, but this level on Goldman Sachs is going to be a key level. That's at 148. So 148 will be a beautiful level. Again, that's if we gap down on Monday on Goldman. That could be a nice buying opportunity, although you might expect a little bit of a bounce on Goldman in the short term as people start to fluctuate or rotate into that thinking it's overdone. 
All right, next week, economic news, folks. Not a ton going on. There's not a ton of economic news that we're going to be covering. Uh, leading indicators we have on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, really nothing. Wednesday, crude inventories. Thursday, initial claims and PPI numbers. And then, obviously, on Friday, we have durable goods orders as well and a couple other things, new home sales and so forth. So there is a little bit, but not a ton of economic data. Next week really is all about earnings. Bottom line, earnings come to the forefront. Citigroup on Monday morning before the market opens. That could be interesting as well. You get Apple on Tuesday, Cree on Tuesday, Goldman Sachs on Wednesday, uh, Coca-Cola, Yahoo, all these on Wednesday as well. And then if we go to Thursday, folks, it looks like AT&T, eBay, McDonald's. Uh, what else? We have Morgan Stanley. So there's a ton of earnings. Friday brings up another couple key stocks. Uh, we have obviously on Thursday and some of these later days, Amazon.com and a bunch of these other ones as well. But it really is going to be a fantastic week next week earnings-wise, and that's going to shape this market. There's no doubt about it. So watch that closely, guys. Earnings are going to continue to rule this market. And again, keep an eye on what happens in Europe and the futures tonight or on Sunday night as we go into trading here. And also keep an eye on Goldman's developments next week and if any other stocks are in play. Take care, folks. I'll talk to you next week. Join the research Center. Join the intraday stock chat. I'll see you there.